Welcome to session two of the week conference by Biological Data in Archives. Types of archival documents containing biographical data. My name is Olga Becker, I'm the chair of this ses session. In this session, archivists meet computer scientists. We will listen to seven presentations. Every presentation lasts 10 minutes. After every presentation, the audience will have the opportunity to ask questions. This discussion period lasts 10 minutes as well and it is crucial part of the session. Please use this time for discussion. I would ask the speakers to keep to time. We will begin with the first speaker, Jan Ludwig, archivist at German Federal Archives in Berlin. Since 2014, he is responsible for documentation in the persecution of Jews. Thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you very much for being here with you. So let me say, dear colleagues, because we are all working on the same topics uh, without being in the same profession, of course. So, um, because I've only 10 minutes, I don't say many about the Bundesarchiv. We have a homepage, or you can ask me after my presentation, of course. Um, I want to present you my time, some examples of biographical data and records which we have with uh, biographical data and uh, maybe interesting for you and uh, the read partners, especially and for handwritten text recognition. First, some examples. We have many, many biographical data, of course, as all archives have, but um, some examples we have. For example, the personal files of the ministries, actually, and the research projects of the, uh, over the uh, history of the um, ministries in Germany. We have um, file cards about career in the army, because the uh, German army uh, uh, holdings are in the military archive, or the military archives of the Bundesarchiv in uh, Freiburg. And what we have, and it's an interesting project we have made years ago, uh, the file cards of prisoners of the SS, uh, prisoners who worked at forced labor. Um, here, first image. Just to show you, because the International Tracing Service and the Federal Archives worked uh, together in a project, and the memorial site at the places where the former concentration camps uh, are, this memorial site uh, built on their own database with this data. And uh, so it's an example of what just is finished. I have three examples for you I will show. The first one is the so-called SS Führer Stammkarten. Sorry, I cannot translate this. There is no real translation of this. This um, example is interesting because it's an example for very detailed biographical file cards. It's not a real file card in the meaning that you have a file card where you have one card after another. But these cards, only uh, in the same measure, uh, all the same style, the same layout, are part of the personal files of their SS officers. So it uh, was it came from the recruitment of the SS, and in these uh, documents you find very much detailed information about the history of a person and uh, the career in uh, the SS. Before 1994, it was uh, part of the holdings of the Berlin Document Center, and since 1994, it's part of our holdings in the Bundesarchiv in uh, Berlin. And uh, the problems for text recognition only with your own eyes, especially, I guess, in, um, with, uh, if you make it uh, with a computer, we have um, um, different handwritings, only especially in one paper, I'll show you just here. So if you can see here different styles of handwriting, you have very small characters there, because the original size is that. And you can imagine how small the characters are. And you have stamps here with Roman type and with German type stamps. Um, that, that is a problem for us to, to read it and we cannot uh, scan it and uh, send it to an internet or make a crowdfunding project because of legal reasons. Here's a person born 1895 uh, but here there are information about the wife and the children and so because of legal reasons uh, they may be still alive and so that is a problem in this case. 
So that is the first sample. Here is the backside, and here, in this case, it's an Austrian one. And here is his career in the Austrian army in the World War One. And you have not every times every fields, of course, but here you have a uh, detailed career of uh, this one. Okay, the most important example, and I hope that you will um, support us um, in the future with uh, handwritten text recognition is, uh, I guess, the most famous example of personal data in the uh, federal archives that are the NSDAP membership records. Most of you know that is one of our holdings. Many people ask, was my father, was my grandfather in the National Socialist Party? And uh, we get many, many inquiries of that. It is the proof to, uh, you can prove if uh, one was in the uh, National Socialist Party if you have the document. We have not from all. 8.5 million uh, members are the cards, but we guess around 80%. We don't know exactly yet, but we will in future, because we are just digit, uh, have a project of uh, digitize it uh, at the moment. Um, we have 12.7 million file cards. 12.7 million file cards and 8.5 million members. What is the problem? We well, are two file card systems. The first was an Uh, central uh, file card system, the central Kartei, which was, which was in alphabetic order. And we have a regional um, ordered Gaukartei from the regional districts of their party, the so-called Gaue. But uh, this second file card system was uh, ordered in alphabetic order uh, after 1945 and the Berlin Document Center. And so are two file cards. And in some cases we have of a member two cards, both cards. And in some cases, it's only one, and in some cases, we have no file card and no proof of the membership, of course. Um, so, it was former part of the Berlin Document Center Collections 2, and it's now part of our collections. Um, and since April uh, 2014, we start a project of uh, digitize it. Uh, the scanning is in Berlin, and it's 300 DPE tips. And the uh, transcription is in Romania, every fifth card, because it's too expensive, of course, and we can additionally put in uh, additional data to later. It is not accessible for free because of legal reasons, but uh, we will make uh, access in the reading room in the future. What are the problems and the challenges of the digitization? Um, different typefaces, of course. We have um, different handwritings of the membership cards, and uh, we have abbreviation, we have cancelled word, we have correction, different colors, and so on and so on. We have faded letters and stains, all what you can fear as an archivist. And last but not least, we have different uh, um, style, uh, sheets of file cards. So here a card of a membership bit, Hans Filbinger, a pr uh, prominent one in Germany. Uh, and here is the two file card systems, the so-called central Partei, with your photos, and here is uh, red, uh, in red, and appropriations here. And my most famous example, uh, I don't like it because of the guy, of course, I'm about to show you the appropriations at all. This is the file card of Adolf Eichmann. So if you have an idea with your systems, I It would be really wonderful. So, okay, so the last three minutes uh, only for a sh short uh, impression of what I do. Um, that is um, the supplementary card of the population census of 1939. It's a proof where lived the Jews in Germany before the Holocaust. And so, therefore, it's very interesting. And in this case, we have around 85% of the Jews who lived in Germany in 1939, we have proved where they lived. And the problem is the file cards are in very bad condition, so you cannot use them. And additionally, you cannot use them because of legal reasons. And so we have a database, an Oracle Apex database, and it's just transcript but not yet scanned. That's the problem. So just with the front side of such a card, And that is the most important side. And the problem will be you have 127,000 different handwritings because everyone has to fill it by itself. So this is a card of Leo Beck and with his signature. 
And so we have just a so in our database, but it's not with a handwritten text recognition program just tipped in and filled in. So, and you can export it that way. I have present you all in a short overview so that you have the decision to ask to whatever topic you want. Thank you very much for your attention. Actually, we prepared also something. So we did something with the images. Mm -hmm. So there are not only questions from our side, mm -hmm. but we can also show something. Mm -hmm. Okay? Do you wish to, to see it? Yeah. Then we will present it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just a short question from my side. So if I see it correctly, people are mainly uh, interested in, uh, in the person name? Yes and searching for the person name or would like to search for the person name at least in an internal uh, mode. So it's clear you cannot give it for free. But yeah. in-house it would be good to have this yes. search on the persons. Mm -hmm. And maybe someone from our group? Uh, yeah. This yes? Is an example for, uh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> so we detected several issues with this uh, car and yes. So, as you can see here. So, this is the last example. In the yes. Uh, so, you, you can see that uh, the background is enhanced here. Mm -hmm. So, we actually need a black and white image. Yeah. So, this is the, uh, our algorithm with default parameters. Mm -hmm. As you can see, some text is missed here. Yes. If we use some other kind of parameters just to trace faint text, mm -hmm. you can see that we gain this information here. Which is quite a readable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. But hold it like this. Okay. And speak in there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, still, you can see that some information is missing here. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's from, uh, this is from me for the uh, first step. Mm -hmm. Enhancement and banalization. I don't know for the. Server processing? Yeah, I mean, as far as I understand, such um, formula forms uh, will appear several thousands of times. Mm -hmm. uh, so it will not change too much the form itself. It's partly. Uh, there are different layouts, and uh, but there are one million of such, of such type. Okay. So there are different layout schemes, but uh, there are many of this scheme. Yes. So um, part of the uh, tool which would be, would be provided by uh, um, Vienna, or the Vienna group, is that uh, a user can define uh, such a, um, a form. And uh, because it is uh, rather easy, uh, Uh, repeated words and also there are lines and so there's a kind of template based approach uh, that you will define such a form and then or several forms and then the engine will uh, compare it with uh, the actual uh, image and um, in this way it is very simple to find the name of uh, the person, so it's uh, one field in this form, and then to apply specific handwriting to this, uh, handwritten text recognition to this uh, uh, form, uh, part of the form. And um, uh, yeah, I think this, that's one of the solutions which uh, uh, we will probably come up with. And I think concerning the handwriting itself, we will maybe say something later on um, because there are many more examples. Well, would you already want to say something? No, let's wait a bit because the, the examples are rather similar and we will say something. Uh, on that. Okay. There's one interesting thing. Uh, you said that you will uh, manually key um, every fifth uh, uh, card, I think the other ones you saw, or this one? 
uh, in, in Romania, the digitization uh, order you did now make? Every fifth by number. So okay. Every fifth by number. I don't know if Adolf Eichmann is uh, the first. No, no. That's clear. Yeah. But that's clear. Yeah. It's prominent, so we will have the date of yeah. What What I want to say is to have just the text of this card mm. can be somehow useful to improve text recognition. But really useful would be if the people in Romania will see uh, this uh, ex um, with the transcribus tool exactly following the, the baseline or the form. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, then uh, you can match the, the uh, data and use them as uh, training input mm -hmm. more or less easily. Yeah? Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> it would cost probably a bit more, I guess uh, 20, 30 percent more. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, something, but not, not the world. Yeah? <laughs> but, uh, and and uh, then you can use it directly. <laughs> Can you say something more about the legal problems? In the first example, it seems that if you mask the uh, lower left part, yes. there would be no problem to, to publish this data. Yes, yes. The, then it would be no problem, but uh, you have to see if there is, is an entry. If there's no entry, it's not, not necessary, but therefore you have to all 52,000 and Do you have the left, uh, on the left corner you have to destroy for for, for, for internet and so um, and the problem is only a few researchers take a look in this uh, documents uh, the membership uh, um, entries are much more interesting for all people but if you are a researcher you will be in our archive you will see the whole personal file and not only the card because the card is just an extraction and so if you are a researcher you are more interested in all And if you just want to look what your grandfather does, it's more interesting than the uh, membership records. But How do you solve the problem with the losing the text on the last line with after the penalization? Well, that's up to you. How do you prove a Text disappears, will not be detected, so it will not be provided as image. Uh, 